You're listening to WCAT Radio, your home for authentic Catholic programming. Welcome to If You Know Mary, You Know Jesus. Hello there, everyone. My name is Bob Cantoni, and I love bringing this show to you because of my great love for the mother of Jesus. And uh, my prayer, one of my prayers is, Jesus, I pour out my whole heart to you because you are everything to me. You are everything, Jesus. You are my all in all. You are the beloved of my soul. And I, I want to imitate you, Jesus, in everything that you do, in the way you walk, the way you talk, the way you, um, the way you preach, your, all of your virtues, every attribute, your humility, your generosity, your kindness, your gentleness, everything, Jesus. I want to be just like you. And especially, especially this, in the way you love your mother. I want to love Mary the way you do, Jesus. And I can't thank you enough for the great privilege that you have given me to make Mary, your mother, known in love so that she can make you known in love. She, nobody does it better than Mary to make you known and loved. And you said it at Fatima that you desire all your children to consecrate themselves to the immaculate heart of my mother. You said that, Jesus. Why? So that she could bring them to perfect consecration to your sacred heart. That's what it's all about. And no one does it better than Mary. Mary in consecration is the easiest, the surest, the fastest, the quickest the most powerful way to sanctification and to the consecration of the sacred heart of Jesus. That's what it's all about. It is the best way, the surest way. And St. Maximilian Colby, St. Louis de Montfort, St. Pio, and all those great million saints, St. Alphonsus Liguori, whose feast day was on Saturday, they will tell you, you read their writings and how they really looked to the mother of God and they gave her permission to be their mother and so that she could mother them into another Christ. That's really what the gospel is all about. This is what pleases God the Father when he sees his son in us. How pleased the Father is. And if you noticed, anyone that is sincerely consecrated to the Immaculate Heart of Mary, they are so meticulously taken care of and polished. Well, I highly recommend it to all, and that is the content of our show. And this week, we're going to... Um, to pick up where we left off with the message of Our Lady of La Salette, I, I ask you all, if uh, you haven't been following, that's okay. I did, me and Robert, I got Robert with us. Hello there, Robert. Hello, Robert. Yeah, thank you for joining us. I got Robert with us who's been um, uh, helping us with the show to get the message of Our Lady of La Salette out. I got two previous shows to this one. This is actually part three of Our Lady of La Salette. So there's part one and part two, and, uh, you know, I, I, I ask you, if you haven't uh, listened, please do, and uh, because I'm going in succession, I, I, I'm, you know, time-wise, we don't have the time to keep going back, so we're going to just run it in succession, and the two visionaries, Melanie and Maximin, and, and keep in mind that these are very young children that Our Lady appeared to, and she gave them very sobering, a very sobering message but also the way out, what to do about it, how God could mitigate, but it's a call to prayer and penance, especially the Holy Rosary. But it's very sobering, sobering for the world, it's sobering for the church, it's sobering for the priesthood. So um, I'm just going to give you a fair warning. Um, I don't know if that's a good word, but a heads up that, uh, you know, keep in mind that even though Our Lady um, seems to be reprimanding the church, the priesthood, the world, humanity, God in his great mercy has given us Mary so that she is like the antidote, the medicine, the way out, all right? And she says extensively in the Mary Movement of Priests how she wants to save humanity, how she wants by the grace of God in virtue of her immaculate conception and all that she did for us to save humanity, save the church, save the priesthood. So all of the plans that she had at Fatima are unfolding, which is really um, a, for, a, a, a kind of like um, a fulfillment or um, a reaction of a lady of the message of La Salette, Fatima, 
But Fatima is really being fulfilled, especially in the Mary movement of priests, and it's really all about rescuing, saving the church, the priesthood, and humanity, for the renewal of the church. So that's really what it's all about. So keep that in mind. Uh, we're reading this, but as our lady, as time goes on through the years, through the centuries, our lady also gives us the, her plan, heaven, the plans of heaven for her to help us out of it and the way to sanctification, okay? So let's uh, begin, as always, in the name, uh, with our prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Come, Holy Spirit, come by means of the most powerful intercession of the Immaculate Heart of Mary, your lovely, beloved spouse. Dear Immaculate Mother, we come before you and beg your intercession. This show is for you, dear Mother, not about us. It's all about Jesus. It's all about heaven. It's all about God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And we ask you, dear Mother, to help us, to guide us, to enlighten us. Um, help us to keep focused on Jesus, your Son, so that we can become another Christ. But dear Mother, for most of all, we ask you to surround us and protect us with your heavenly mantle and grace with all the holy angels and saints and souls in purgatory. Saint Joseph, we ask you to intercede for us in a very powerful way as always, protect us from the evil one and, and teach fathers of families and all families to uh, become that spiritual warrior, that... that um, that soldier in the family, the, the warrior, the, the, the military figure in the family that present to keep Satan from having access to his to, your, to their wives and children. So we ask all of this in the holy name of Jesus, and I also ask you, dear Mother, to protect all those that are listening. And dear Jesus, let your most precious blood flow upon us all, and Holy Spirit, open our hearts and minds to so all that God wants us wants to teach us and to embrace. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. And I'm going to say Amen. one hail Mary in Latin for these intentions. Ave Maria, gratia plena, Dominus tecum, benedicta tu in mulieribus, et benedictus fructus ventris tui, Jesus. Sancta Maria, Mater Dei, ora pro nobis, peccatoribus, nunc et in ora mortis nostrae. Amen. So, what I'd like to do is just give, uh, you know, we, we, uh, we've been reading the message from Our Lady of La Follette. She commissioned these children, uh, Melanie and Maximin, very young, eight, maybe ten at the most, very young children. And um, she smiled at them and she said, so now I want you to go and tell humanity of what I told you. So, and that's where we're picking up. We're helping Melanie and Maximin to get to help Our Lady to get this message out to humanity. And uh, so, but Melanie and Maximin uh, from France, La Salette, France, they were in the fields, they were working, and uh, well, they were also very playful. They were children, they were playful, and they built like this paradise. So whatever they did, they, they used stones, I don't know, but they would build this playful paradise, and then, uh, they also were very prayerful, and they were praying the Angelus, the prayer very pleasing to Our Lady. It's about the incarnation of Christ and Our Lady's fiat to God so that the Word become, could become flesh and dwell among us to save the world, was brought into the world to the, to the virginal womb of Mary, the mother of Jesus. So that beautiful prayer, and then shortly after that, Our Lady appeared to the children and gave them the message. So I'll leave it up to you to read um, or to listen to the two previous shows, part one and part two, and now we're going to start part three. So here's where we left off. So the message goes as such, Our Lady, this is Our Lady to Maximin, or to, to actually uh, Miriam. The society of men is on the eve of the most terrible scourges and of gravest events. Mankind must expect to be ruled with an iron rod and to drink from the chalice of the wrath of God. Wow. Well, why? So Robert was telling us the last time, you know, the, well, in, in, the big part of the message was men are not keeping holy the Sabbath, and they're also using the Lord's name in vain, and I'm hoping that Robert could share, just give us a little bit of insight on what 
that means and what's going on. What do you see, Robert, in the churches today? Well, it, it, in a way, with with what's going on with our youth um, in the preparation uh, that's happening in the family, uh, there are very, very few that truly uh, enter in uh, to the Word of God. And uh, what I've witnessed in my own life, even within my own family and things, even with trying to nurture them toward God, to that love of God, more so, it, it, it's almost like sometimes it it falls upon, uh, um, uh, at best, thorns and thistles. Uh, that fertile yeah, what ground about the, isn't what there. What about the keeping the holy, the Lord's day with Our Lady talking about? You know, what's going on there? What is she talking about? Why is God? Um, what, she came as a message because during the days of, of La Salette, one of the uh, troubles was that men were not keeping the Lord's day holy, not, not keeping the Sabbath holy, and using the Lord's name in vain. So, what can you say about that? Well, even in, in the midst of it, there's such an uh, immense uh, uh, busyness in life, uh, yeah. where the, the the mothers and the fathers they're 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 both off with professions, and yeah. uh, there there's so much to there, there's such a, a modernism that's infected everything. Just trying to exist, it's like it's falling upon itself. People are just stumbling through life, trying to make ends meet. Uh, and without God in that in that center, where's that true peace? Where how are we living out peace? And you know, even the Holy Mass, they say, "Peace be with you." And we all turn. We used to turn. Um, really, wh- what what peace are we asking for? Um, looking at each other, is it the peace of God? Is it God's kingdom coming on earth as it is in heaven within our families? Uh, is it that? Then why is it that it's all about football? Well, most yeah, of the time when they get exactly. home, and every other thing under the sun, and, and they take off their 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 their, their, their sports, church clothes, sports, and yeah. and they enter off into what they want, and the parents are are kind of afraid of pushing the children towards the faith at all, and yet um, they say they're bored. So you've got all these situations, and in a way, back then I'm I'm sure it was a, a different sense because there was no TV yeah. then. Uh, but now with the media and TV and, and all the yeah. other things, it, it's almost like a wash. Uh, there could be a thousand people at mass, but is anyone there? And I'm, yeah. to get, don't get me wrong, I know there are faithful there, there are sorrowing there. Sure. Exactly. It, it says also that God will send these, in, in this message of, of, of La Salette, he will send these chastisements to, to, for a particular reason, to, to draw them to himself. Um, um, and, and, and in a way, when tragedy comes into families, they turn to God, and um, uh, and, and it draws them in. But also, we'll get there later of what Our Lady had told them, and what Max and Melanie said about how um, how the people would very few would repent. God would co- hold come back on yeah. that particular chastisement. But you know what comes and to mind? Wait. For yeah. their repentance, you know, and they wouldn't, and it wouldn't be there. Yeah. But go ahead, Bob. Comes to mind is we got this COVID, this COVID uh, yeah. uh, uh, virus. It, it's like God gave humanity a timeout, like any good parent, timeout, timeout. All right, and notice the sports, all sports, most sports have shut down. That some of them are coming back, but you know. But you think about it. Sunday was a big football day, big baseball day. Now I'm not saying that. It, bad baseball and football no god we can enjoy them but when that takes precedence over the lord's day there's something wrong with this picture we've got everything in the wrong order it's god first god gave everyone six days of the week he really did he gave us six days to work to uh to enjoy uh to take care of things to relax six days and all he is asking is just for one day to take time out and spend time with him and give him his due. The pi- that's what the virtue of piety is. Give God his due, the love in return for all that he has given us. And it seems in these days that everybody is just too busy or they have 
way too many other interests in God. They don't have time for God. It seems like everybody's like, I can't wait to get in and get out of my ass so I can go to whatever I want to do. That's a problem. And we really need to ask heaven for the grace to overcome that, to help us put it, put rightly order things in God, you know. I teach, I used to teach uh, confirmation. I can't begin to tell you. I, I taught it for 15 years. Um, and uh, the, the, the parents will bring, and I'm not going to name them, but many of the parents would bring their children, but the parents never would attend mass themselves. Why would you bring your children to confirmation if you're not attending mass? You're breaking, uh, the, what is it, the third commandment. Or is it the second one? Remember to keep holy the Sabbath, as you know this. But nevertheless, it's like... And then, a lot of times, uh, a parent would come in and, and knock on my classroom door and say, oh, uh, my daughter and my son so-and-so, uh, they have to leave 25 minutes early because they have basketball practice. Really? Really? You're cutting short? your confirmation practice and learning about God to be confirmed because you've got basketball practice? How about next year when you're done playing basketball and you have time for confirmation in God, why don't you come then? But until then, they're not ready. I mean, seriously, that is more important than God and the Sabbath and going to Mass? This is serious business, folks. And, uh, you know, in heaven, and, our, and God is sending our lady to warn us, to steer us back in the right direction so that we don't head into disaster. But she's telling us, you know, that uh, mankind must expect to be ruled with an iron rod and to drink from the chalice of the wrath of God. That is pretty, that's frightening. That's sobering. For keeping, not keeping the, holy, the Lord's day holy, and also using the Lord's name in vain. If these are not serious commandments, then why would Our Lady give us such a warning? People take it so lightly as if, oh, God doesn't mind. Well, yes, he does, right, Robert. And in a, in a way, it's like we cannot eat at the table of the Lord and, and also the table of demons. And what's happening also, everything from Harry Potter, Pokemon, Dungeons and yep. Dragons, all these aspects are in, in their cursed, many cursed things in the house. The houses aren't blessed. And in a way, uh, our, our, our um, bishops and priests, are they trying to guide and protect uh, uh, all, all, of their, all of their flock from this? Is anything being said? And uh, I've even said it on the, the, the show, I've experienced many things, even within the Catholic churches, where they have these books, some of them in their libraries. Mm. So you can see, yeah. it, 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 it's, it's, it, what would God do with that? What, what has he done in the past through Scripture with mm. Solomon and with, with, with Saul and everything like that? So there's that iron rod. Now, now, for everyone that's listening, because the accountability is there now for all of us, and we can't fall to the sin of omission. We've got to pray about it, fast, be dead to ourselves, so Jesus, in the power of the Holy Spirit, can speak through us to inform, instruct, admonish gently and lovingly. And if 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 we do, if if we do that and they don't listen still, then we we must weep with Our Lady, because. Yeah. They're on the path to hell. Anyone that's involved with this, it's very, very dangerous. Very dangerous. What's happening oh, now? Geez. And and La oh. Follette is really, really, um, it's really saying that. And you know, there's many of these apparitions, some true, some false, and, and they're saying some of these things. But we really don't even have to go there. They're already in this apparition, which is accepted. It'd be wise to heed what the Mother of God has asked of us. Yeah. yeah, and you know, and, and you know, God is so merciful. I want you know, I may be coming across harsh too and and, and strong, but you know, uh, this is um, a wake up call for all of us. But keep in mind that the mercy of God is available. All, uh, much much could be mitigated. But Our Lady is really saying, listen, we need to convert and change our lives 
all in for God, convert to the, to the ways of the Lord and live the gospel of Jesus Christ, which is an urgent call to conversion, to, to renounce the world, the flesh, and the devil, renounce all idolatry, because even sports become idolatry. You know, um, and Bob mentioned uh, the books like Harry Potter, Dungeons and Dragons, and um, Pokemon, believe it or not. Uh, Father Mitch Pacwa has a show on the New Age movement. And even Pokemon is considered New Age, where the, it kind of like hypnotizes you and is a major distraction from God. And the children and the parents let them play as if they're, oh, it's wonderful. No, it's not. No, it's not. It's very dangerous, and the devil is using that. And Our Lady of Lost Let is talking about it, and I'm going to I'm going to get to this in a minute. Uh, what she said um, along these lines, because uh, you know we need to be taught. Many people they just don't know. They're not getting the information, and we're trying to get that information out via Our Lady of Lost so that uh, so that she could act. You can let our Blessed Mother into your lives and lead you in the way of. Uh, um, in the way of the commandments of God, in the way of her son Jesus and the gospel, so that we can be pleasing to the Father and our lives will be full of joy. We will be so full of joy and happiness and contentment. All right, so, so move with an iron rod. Now, that's also Revelation 12. Right? Our Lord warns us of that. Let's go just take a look there for a minute. This is interesting. You know, um, all right, Revelations 12, let's see here. Well, let me just start, to, because I can't really find it. We'll just start from the beginning. And a great sign appeared in the heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet, and her head a crown of 12 stars. So that's Our Lady of Guadalupe, and, and vividly Our Lady, Lady of Guadalupe, and also Our Lady of Fatima, where they saw the miracle of the sun pulsing, at a, and she's crowned with 12 stars. And being with a child, she tr cried, travailing in birth, and was in pain to be delivered. And there was seen an, another sign in heaven, and behold, a great red dragon had in seven heads and ten horns, and on his head seven diadems. Our Lady depicts the, the huge red dragon as, as, as atheism, to lead humanity to do without God. We don't need God. We are gods. We will create a utopian society without God. That's the huge red dragon. That is the sin of Lucifer. And if we're following that, we're sinning the sin of Lucifer. And that's where all of these evil books like Harry Potter, witchcraft, and uh, anything, Satanism, witchcraft, Dungeons and Dragons, these are all tools of the devil that the devil is leading us to do without God. We will have all this wonderful power that we can harness on our own. That's what it's all about. It's idolatry. It's, it's false worship, and the devil is supplying whatever pusillanimous power he has compared to God, and people are taking advantage of it and thinking this is wonderful, but, man, it is dangerous. Oh, my goodness. And our lady's warning about it. And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven and cast them to the earth. That's what will happen if we follow the ways of Lucifer. We really need to listen to the mother of God and follow the ways of her son, Jesus. 180 degrees. Strive to live the gospel of her son. Mary always says, Listen to my son. God the Father says, this is my beloved son. Listen to him. Don't listen to the world, the flesh, and the devil. He has only one thing in mind, and that is to destroy. And he's dead serious about it. Don't let him trick and, you. Go ahead, Robert. And Robert, I just wanted to say, too, if you notice what you just said, a third of the stars will be, be swept um, yeah. from the sky. So if you think about it, even within the priesthood and, and um, um, the responsibility um, of informing, instructing, admonishing, and yet you hear very little of, of that true fear of the Lord uh, that needs to be instilled where all these things, uh, even uh, you know, with, with what we just spoke about, should be thrown into the darkness where they belong. 
and and yet nothing is ever said. Nothing no, is ever it's, it's said that the dangers of this thing, and yet they oh, continue the on. I know. But but it's almost like the Holy Spirit and in and, 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 and in the Word of God, how it could be expressed all yeah. the way through. And it reminds me of Our Lady of Fatima when the little children, someone died, a young child died, and they said, is she in heaven, heaven, blessed mother? And Our Lady said that she'll be in purgatory to the end of time. I know. What the now, heck what she could do? she have done I know. as a child? Most likely, mm. was it the which it, was it the situation with um, the occult? Was it the the it had um, to be. Um, the with, parents um, led into the, the occult. The, gyps, it had the to gypsies, be because... the gypsies, and the the the, 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 the witchcraft yeah. and all these other things. Yeah. If you think about that, there's a great meditation there, but yet it's not even alluded to. The dangers mm-hmm. of this, um, yeah. and in uh, yeah. it, 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 it has to be um, expressed uh, personally. Uh, it's just to be taken heart because with the third of the stars swept from the sky, is it possible because of the sins of omission, admitting the informing and instructing because of human respect, or because even political situations with the, uh, oh, uh, losing right. faith? And just living for a monetary view of what the church looks like or whatever is—is is it there? Is everything so? How's everything going? Not not very well. Even our confirmation classes, what's being taught there? And I can remember there was a a, a friend of mine that asked me to come and speak to her confirmation. Uh, uh, three of them, three classes, and and I couldn't believe what I saw. And um, and in speaking with them, one was uh, had a fight with a girlfriend, with her, which they were chewing the gum, their feet were another thing. Couldn't believe it. So I looked at them all and, and I said, you know what I'm going to preach here or share? Um, Christ and Christ crucified. And I, and I spoke about the passion. Joan, in the end, it was amazing because I, I didn't hold back. Father Stanley Schmelensky would really give beautiful, beautiful sermons and and uh, um, 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 retreats on the passion, and it was beautiful because I thank God for him, and I was able to hear that, and I didn't hold back. Those three classes yeah. heard that. In the end, I looked at them all, and I said, "Now I'm going to turn around, and I'm going to consecrate myself to Jesus through Mary." And if you want to continue to, to, to I mean, if you want to embrace what I'm saying, pray with me. And I turned around, and I knelt down. And, 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 and face the tabernacle, and I asked permission to speak in the chapel. And, and do you know every person, every, every, all three classes, they all got on their knees. From now on, like, like St. Paul said in Athens, from now on, when he went to Corinth, I'm going to preach Christ and Christ crucified. That's right. And that's the way, the truth, and the life. So, sure, so that's really us. what it is. And that fear of the Thank Lord leads to wisdom, and wisdom leads to obedience, and it's the wisdom of the cross. And we must teach that to our children. We are not Protestant. Yeah. You know, the devil uh, wants to remove the cross, but Our Lady is no stranger to the cross. But she's a great gift from heaven that helps us carry the cross. Jesus will help us carry the cross. She had to help her own son, God the Father, in his infinite wisdom, permitted Mary so she could help her son. She's there to help us carry our cross. There's no other way. Unless you can pick up your cross and follow me, you cannot be my disciple. You must deny yourself. This is the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. You know, and it says here in Revelation 12, um, the, the third of the stars of part of heaven was cast to the earth. The dragon stood before the woman who was ready to be delivered that he, when she, she should be delivered that he might devour her son. Why? Think about that. He doesn't want Jesus to be, come, to be birthed on earth, to be our Savior. He wants all of humanity destroyed and in hell. Oh, my goodness. And he's serious. He's dead serious about it. He's going to stop at nothing because of the envy, the hatred for God and the hatred of humanity. So he says, and she brought forth a man-child. Thanks be to God, our lady and virtue of her immaculate conception was able to bring forth who was to rule all nations with an iron rod and her son was taken up to God and to, the, to his throne and the woman fled into the wilderness where she had a place prepared by God that there should be feed her a, a, a thousand two hundred and sixty days 
It also says, woe to the inhabitants of the earth. There. This is Revelation 12. Um, and the great dragon was cast out, and the serpent who was called the devil and Satan who seduced, who seduced, seduced the whole world. And we read a message last week in the mirror movement of the priests. That's what Our Lady said. He has succeeded in seducing the whole world using scientists, artists, scholars, professors in colleges, the powerful, the wealthy are all instruments of, of Satan, the huge red dragon. Isn't that interesting? Isn't that interesting? And now I heard a loud voice in heaven saying, Now has come salvation and strength, the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ, because the accuser of our brethren is cast forth. That's exactly what the devil and Satan does. He accuses us, the brethren of Christ, those that are consecrated to the Immaculate Heart of Mary, those who love Jesus Christ, those who are consecrated to his sacred heart, who keep the commandments, are washed clean in the blood of the Lamb, who proclaim Jesus Christ as Lord. The devil and Satan accuses us day and night. That's why there's so much persecution of the church. Take a look around you. Take a look what's going on in Oregon. They don't. The news doesn't show you what's going on in Oregon. Take a look. Go on the internet and Google it. So it says, and they overcame. Um, they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb. Uh, I know it says, uh, "Woe to the inhabitants of the earth." What does it say that? Um, therefore, oh, here it is. Um, yeah, therefore rejoice, O heavens, and you that dwell therein. Woe to the earth and to the sea, because the devil has come down unto you, having great wrath, knowing that he hath but a short time. Oh, yeah. He's on a frenzy. And look out. We need the mother of God. We need the sacraments. We need prayer. We need the mercy of God. We need to stay really close to the sacred heart of Jesus, especially through the heart of Mary. She, her heart is in the ark of the new covenant. It's the ark. It's like in Noah's day. We need to board that ark the best way of Mary in consecration. Pray the rosary. She's always beg begging us. Pray, pray, pray. The rosary is your weapon. It's your weapon. So that's what she's talking about here. A mankind must expect to be ruled with an iron rod because the whole world is seduced by the evil one. The huge red dragon leads the humanity to rebel against God. That's what the huge red dragon is doing. He wants to lead humanity to do without God, to rebel against God. That's why our Lord needs to rule with an iron rod. So many. Now, this is back in 1859. I'm going to read it because it's part of the message. Uh, I'll be honest with you. I am not well versed in the history, but um, I plan to be. But I'm going to read it anyways, and I'll let you do a little research on your own. But at eight, in 1859, may the curate of my son, Pope Pius IX, never leave Rome again after 1859. May he, however, be steadfast and noble. May he fight with the weapons of faith and love. I wonder if that was, uh, uh, well, I'm, I'm not sure. I need to find out. But anyways, I will be at his side. May he be on his guard against Napoleon. So during the time of Napoleon... And Our Lady is accusing Napoleon as being two-faced. He is two-faced, and when he wishes to make himself Pope as well as Emperor, God will soon draw back from him. He is the mastermind who always, wanting to ascend further, will fall on the sword he wished to use to force his people to be raised up. So he who lives by the sword shall die by the sword. God will soon draw back from him, especially whenever you have a corrupt king, a corrupt ruler of a nation. It's, all, it's written throughout the whole Old Testament history. Just read it. God draws back and they fall on their own sword or whatever. Disaster comes one way or another. It's amazing. Then she goes on to say, Italy will be punished for her ambition in wanting to shake off the yoke of the Lord of Lords. I need to know what that is. Any idea, Robert? Um, well, turn back it, it, if your your tre where your heart is, your treasure is also. 
So in yeah. these ambitions, if if we're um, we're not well formed in what we profess and in, in the vows we take during uh, during Easter, rejecting Satan, all his pomps, works, and allurements, that's really yeah. the this base world the one. church yeah. gives us. So 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 if we enter right back into the world, in other words, yes, we take it. Yeah. People seem to be taking it hard. Yeah. Everyone's saying it, but they get home and they jump right back in. To yes. flesh the world and Very even the devil, and then yeah, here they is... say they're cat. If anyone says they're Catholic or whatever, or they profess it, oh yeah, they're the Catholics or whatever. They look at their lives, and I've heard many people come to me. So, well, how come this one does this and whatever and whatever? And 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 then I've got to 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 take each individual situation that's said and express it for how hard it is to live the faith, uh, um, but how few do. I'm sorry to say. And that is proven now of how many believe, people believe that the true presence in Jesus in the most blessed sacrament. Yeah. It's the statistics that are there. The voting, the Catholics, it's no different. Uh, birth control, the whole thing. It's very, very sad. And very seldom it's propagated, the faith is propagated in the way it should be to, to, to admonish, inform, instruct. So I'm sorry to say that, but it's the mm-hmm. truth of the matter. Um, you know, this, um, yeah, thank you, Robert, for sharing that. Yeah, it, and this is does pre, pre, pre-World War One, so it's leading up to World War One, and uh, and uh, so in her ambition, Italy is is like ancient Israel in a sense, where they're saying we want a king just like the other nations who will lead us in battle and war against them who are persecuting us when they rejected God and His yoke, which. Jesus says, learn of me, for I am meek and humble of heart. Take my yoke upon you, for my yoke is easy and my burden light. And, and humanity has a bad habit of wanting to remove the yoke of Christ and put on the yoke of the world of flesh and the devil and fight like the rest of the world. And this is exactly what she's talking about here. So. For her ambition in wanting to shake off the yoke of the, war, the Lord of Lords, and so she will be left to fight a war. So God said uh, back in David's day, or um, I think it was King David, it was King Saul. Anyway, one of those Old Testament stories where uh, Israel was saying, no, we want our own king. And God said to the prophet, you tell them, give them what they want. They don't want me for king. You give them a world of king, and then all the disaster comes. See, this is what happens when we want to reject God and take matters into our own hands, but that's exactly what the huge red dragon, communist atheism, wants to bring us into rebellion against God, take matters into our own hands, but he knows, the devil and Satan knows, that that's going to lead to ultimate disaster and destruction. That's what and, and, and Robert, if I could say too, the situation is so horrendous with 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 abortion, and how yes. many little children have been have suffered so immensely. Um, it, it, it's it's you couldn't even explain it. But you know, you think about this, and they they preach everything from um, everything about uh, uh, um, climate change and everything like that. Well. If we're in, stooped in sin, Satan wants to destroy the world. So therefore, if it's not addressed the way God has wanted us to address it, what do we do? We fall to the flesh in the world, and we 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 surfacely speak about all these other elements are because of the the because of the sin that's there. We bring this upon ourselves. Yeah. In other words, instead of speaking about the the the, the terrible situation with abortion. You can't just speak about uh, the, what happens through it, uh, the situation with the world, with climate change. Uh, of course, that's going to happen because it's going to be uh, our whole world is stooped in selfishness, and God wants yes. His kingdom to come on earth as it is in heaven. So, therefore, every soul would be a good steward, but it's because of sin, yeah. and and if it's not proclaimed from the podium of which God has given, what do we have? What do we have? Yeah, that's why Our Lady is going to various apparition sites. She's proclaiming it. She's giving us a warning. I mean, she has to go 
in certain parts of the world and speak to the young children. Get, will you get my message out? Melanie and Maxim, will you proclaim what I just told you? Isn't that interesting? Out of the mouths of babes, heaven has to speak. You know, it's interesting that a lady appeared when they, after they were praying, Melanie and Max were praying the Angelus, because that's when Mary said, be it done unto me according to your word. Fiat God. She gave God heaven her fiat. And the rest of the world and much of the world, you know, is giving their fiat to the huge red dragon. And then we wonder why these disasters are happening. Listen to what she's saying. She said, okay, um, church, uh, um, so Italy will be punished for her ambition in wanting to shake off the yoke of the Lord of Lords, and so she will be left to fight a war. Blood will flow on all sides, and listen to this. Churches will be locked up or desecrated. What is happening now? They're starting to open up a little bit. Yeah, they were locked up for a while, and they could get locked up again. What's going on? Are we living holy, the, the, the Ten Commandments? Are we, especially the first one, love God with your whole heart, mind, soul, and strength. I am the Lord your God. You shall not have false gods before you. Remember to keep holy the Sabbath. You shall not use the Lord's name in vain. Are we doing these things? Are we following the commandments? And apparently, when churches are being locked up, that's a sure sign that we're really not. Priests and religious orders will be hunted down. Just read, uh, just Google it. In Africa, China, all over the world. And made to die a cruel death. You don't hear about this on the news. There are so many martyrs in China, in Africa, priests being martyred all over the world. You don't hear about it, though. Because the huge red dragon has seduced the whole world. You don't want to be on his side of the aisle. Several will, will abandon the faith, and a great number of priests and members of religious orders will break away from the true religion. Among these people, there will even be bishops. Wow. Now, these are words of Our Lady. What is happening? Is this actually happening? Revelation 12. Certainly signs are there. May the Pope guard against the performers of miracles. For the time has come when the most astonishing wonders will take place on the earth and in the air. I want to read a message from Enoch. I had read it before on previous shows. Let me read it again. This man is a visionary. I believe that he's, he's authentic. Um, again, this is private revelation. Um, he may he has approval by uh, his bishop. Um, it may not be universally approved, but um, I will leave uh, whether you accept this or not up to your discretion. But it certainly lines up exactly what Jesus is talking about to Saint Faustina in her diary about the sign of this sort that will appear in the sky. You can go to Faustina's diary and look up the message of Jesus. Uh, he will give the sign of his cross in the sky. He doesn't give the detail in the diary, but Enoch fills in all the details. And this is message was given May 12, 2019. Um, I believe he's from, where is he from? I think he's from um, South America somewhere. I'm not sure if he's from uh, Argentina, but anyways. So this message what Jesus says, My people, I bring my peace, my love, and my mercy to you. I am your Jesus of mercy who speaks to you. Pay attention to me, people of mine. The end of the time of my mercy is approaching. Now Jesus talks about that to Faustina. He says, Now is the time of mercy, but there will be a time where there will be a time of my justice. He talks about that. Take advantage of these last thousands that you still have left so that you can reconcile with God and to take the path of salvation. So it's a call back to the gospel, a conversion, an urgent conversion message of, of um, totally renouncing the world, the flesh, and the devil with the help of God's grace and living a life of righteousness, of holiness, rooted in the gospel of Jesus Christ. 
God the Father's plea to humanity. This is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. Listening means obedience means to hear and act upon. It doesn't mean, St. James says, what good is it to listen but not act? Be ye doers of the word and not just hearers. That's the gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So he says, with my warning and miracle, the time of my mercy will end and the time of the final stage of my justice and purification will start, which is going to end with your deliverance and removal of the kingdom of evil from the earth. The devil and Satan, Revelation 12, knows, but he has a short time. It's about to end and he knows it. But it doesn't mean that he's not going to work frantically to destroy as many souls as he can. He wants to take as many souls as he can. Even in the church. Even in the church. Priests, bishops, please. Now, lady, it's a call to holiness, a call to the gospel. She wants to save all humanity, especially her priest sons, her bishops, especially um, her children, the world. My people, my glorious cross will soon appear in the firmament and it will be visible throughout the earth. All of humanity will be able for seven days with their nights to contemplate the brilliance of my glorious cross of the Golgotha. For as long as my glorious cross lasts in the sky, great celestial manifestations will be seen. Okay? Now, Our Lady of La Salette speaks of that. Okay? She says, has come the most astonishing wonders will take place on the earth and in the air. All right? In the year 1864, Our Lady said, Lucifer together with a large number of demons will be unloosed from hell. They will put an end to faith by little by little, even in those dedicated to God. And, uh, just so you know, I'm referring right back to our, the message of Our Lady of La Salette. I'll be jumping back and forth. But now I'm reading from Our Lady of La Salette. These are her words, all right? So the demons will be run loose from hell. And that's in line with uh, Revelation 12. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth, for the devil and Satan has been cast down. They will put an end to the faith little by little, even in those dedicated to God. They will blind them in such a way that unless they are blessed with a special grace, these people will take on the spirit of these angels of hell. Oh, my goodness. Robert, um, it, yeah, yeah. Let, let, me, let me just finish this one okay, last go ahead. Several go religious ahead. institutions will lose all faith and will lose many souls. Okay, Robert, go ahead. What, what I wanted to say is a remedy a remedy for for a discernment uh, in this particular time that that's going to come to be. And the mm -hmm. remedy is this, to be able to understand these false signs and these true signs is it's, it, it, it said very clearly it's only in the cross. So how do we do this? It's very simple. Prior to Mass or every day at home or whatever, ask and beg God through Blessed Mother and through all the especially the saint of the day and all the church triumphant, to have the gift of contemplation. And, and as you do that, do the Stations of the Cross 14 different right. times. You can enter in the true wisdom of God. And because it's contemplation, you don't have to say a lot of prayers. But if God is going to speak to you in your heart, listen. He will guide you. You will know what is true. And what is false? What is what is what is what is of Satan or what is of God? So in this, as you continually do this, and it came to me as in uh, our loved ones, we're talking about how there's such a mess and there's so much misinformation and there's so uh, there's so many things happening which which are not helping souls. So so in this, you can do no, a novena. If you have a grandson or a, a husband or a wife that's not in the faith or anyone, a friend, a co-worker, offer, do a nine-day novena of the Stations of the Cross for them. Yeah. And watch what happens on the ninth day. Amen. A very powerful and, and, thing. Yeah, so, so, and then in this, you'll, you'll see the fruit of that because God will answer that heartfelt prayer for them. 
and he'll bless the situation immensely, and you know the way. And, and, and in that, you will know what these signs are. You'll see it lived out on earth. You'll see God's kingdom coming on earth as it is in heaven. And many, many will convert. But it's only in the cross. May the Holy Cross be our light and not the dragon be our guide. St. Benedict, right. pray for us. Pray for us. Well, well said, brother. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, it's... um. It's, it shook up his message here as I'm reading this, but this is an approved, universally approved apparition of Our Lady. And um, so I'm just uh, uh, reiterating what she's saying, and uh, I'm hoping to, to shed a little light on, as Robert did, the way, the remedy for all of this, how to be prepared. Um, but nevertheless, whether we are living in the um, the times that she's speaking of or not, we need to be ready anyway, you know, as if we are living our last days. We need to be ready. That is the gospel of Jesus. So, but this is um, it's very interesting. A large number of demons would be unloosed from hell. They would put an end to the faith little by little, even those dedicated to God. That's why St. John Paul said, too said, it is utmost, it is indispensable. Marian consecration is indispensable so that this doesn't happen. You know, put an end to faith little by little, even in those dedicated to God. Mary con- and Our Lady, via her consecration, according to St. Louis the Moffat, St. Maximilian Colby, St. John Paul II, St. Peel, all these great Marian saints say that through that consecration, Mary will preserve us in the truth. She will shield us and protect us from the spirit of error. It is error that leads us astray and leads us to, to uh, uh, put an end to faith little by little. It's error. And Our and, Lady and, protects us from that because she is the spouse of the spirit of truth, God the Holy Spirit. Go ahead, Robert. And right before Jesus went to the cross and he was speaking to his, his disciples and his apostles, he he, he he had said that it is it is it is Satan's hour, but he has no place in me. That's it is right, Satan's right. hour, but he has no That's place in me. So beautiful. we have to be sons of God, right. sons of Mary, consecrated to Mary, consecrated to Jesus through Mary. So as we do this, we will no longer live. Jesus will live in us. And if Jesus wishes us to be martyred, we will be for the glory of God. If he wishes us to be a white martyr, I promise you, we all are white martyrs if we love God and our neighbor in this day and one. age. Let's pick up our cross and follow Jesus. If you wish to be my disciple, you must deny yourself, pick up your cross daily and follow me. Oh, Heavenly Queen, Great Mother of God, St. Joseph, all the holy angels and saints, Please, I beg you to help us pick up our crosses and follow Jesus. He is the, he is the way, the truth, and the life. That's it. There is no other way. So this is interesting, you know. And, uh, and uh, we were talking about, um, I, mean, I want to get back to uh, the message from Enoch, too, because um, it's, it's, it's very hopeful, very hopeful. But right now we're focusing on a lady of La Salette just to keep you all on the same page as I am, uh, I'll have a tendency to jump back and forth, but uh, I don't know any other way to do it. Anyways, so several religious institutions will lose all faith and will lose many souls. Even St. Francis prophesied that of his own order to some degree, you know. Uh, also, she speaks of evil books will be abundant on earth. Evil books! Harry Potter, Dungeons and Dragons, State the one of the uh, uh, greatest selling books, even in the United States, is the book of uh, the Bible of Satan. Can you imagine? The spirits of darkness will spread everywhere in a universal slackening, a universal slackening of all that concerns the service of God. Not keeping holy the Sabbath, sports, everything. It's all slackening. Oh, it's not that important. These things are more important. More important, you see? Even priests, or they will not have been guided by the, these evil women. Let me see. Um, 
Evil books will be abundant on earth, and the spirits of darkness will spread everywhere, a universal slackening of all that concerns the service of God. They will have great power over nature. This is interesting. And uh, I'll share a little story with you um, that I had done recently. I was working in a field, and there was uh, some woody, uh, there was trees behind me, and I was working on the ground, and all of a sudden I heard this cracking, like a branch cracking. And I turned and looked over my shoulder, and sure enough, there was this branch, maybe two and a half inches in diameter, maybe about 12 feet in length, 15 feet in length. It had beautiful leaves. It was very fresh. It wasn't rotten one bit. It was green as could be, and it's bending down and cracking, and it just peeled off and fell to the ground. <laughs> like, what was that? So I'm looking up in the tree. Am I in a jungle in, uh, in the Amazon? Is there monkeys in the tree breaking branches? No, there was no monkey. And uh, Is there a raccoon or a bear in the tree? Because I'm about to run for my life. No, there was no bear. There was no raccoon. Was there a big bird, maybe a pterodactyl? No, there was nothing. Well, why did this branch just fall? I don't know. It's beyond me. But that, that was strange to me. That was a strange freak of nature. Anyway, the, the, getting back to Our Lady Velocilette, there will be churches built to serve these spirits, all right? Even in Connecticut, there's satanic temples built to worship Satan. Can you imagine? All over Connecticut. I can't, even in Oklahoma, they want to set up a statue of Lucifer, Satan, the goat's head. And, he's, and conveniently, he's got two children, a boy and a girl, looking up at, as he's like such this great guy or something. It is crazy. It's getting crazy, folks. Get this. People will be transported, transported from one place to another by these evil spirits, even priests. So woe to the inhabitants of the earth. The devil and Satan has been cast out with great power. And he's going to manifest these crazy miracles that's going to entice many. Even St. Unipero Serra, you know him? The statue that's being destroyed that really uh, in California, St. Unipero Serra, he was, to he, he was told, uh, uh, that according to uh, what's been taught in colleges, that Unipero Serra was a bigot and uh, he was a racist, but that's not true. He helped Amer the American Indian. He helped the poor. He clothed them. He fed them. He housed them. He took them under his wing. He even baptized many. He cared for them as a good Christian follower of Christ would do. Yet, he, he taught in, in the colleges and universities that he was a racist and a hater. It's not true. So this, this, this movement that's happening in the United States, they want to destroy his statue for a false notion of him. But, that's not, but I'll tell you, he witnessed through the worship of the pagan Indians back in those days. They, they worshipped um, whatever their, their rituals were, that the Indians would fly through the air as St. Anipolo Sailor would approach them because they were so demonically possessed. And then they would land in this cave in the, in the, in the mountains there, and Anipolo Sailor would, would pursue them and he was going to the cave, he would find these demon-possessed Indians in the form of like these frog reptilian type kind of creatures. But they were demonically possessed, and yeah, they had the power to fly away under the influence of Satan. And this is what our lady's talking about. People will be transported from one place to another by these evil spirits, even priests, for they will not have been guided by the good spirit of the gospel. Oh, my goodness, which is a spirit of humility, charity, and zeal for the glory of God. On occasions, the dead and the righteous will be brought back to life. That is to say that these dead will take on the form of righteous souls, which had lived on earth in order to lead men further astray. These so-called resurrected dead will be nothing but the devil in this form who will preach another gospel contrary to that of the true Christ, Jesus, denying the existence of heaven. That is also to say the souls of the damned. All these souls will appear as if fixed to their bodies. I'm going to stop there for a minute. That's getting freaky. But this is Our Lady of La Salette. And um, 
you know, I, I don't think she's uh, making this up. Now, even in the message of um, of Enoch, he speaks of um, many um, signs that will be happening in the in the heavens and so forth. So, but this this is very very hopeful. This message of Enoch. I want to read it to you right now. And uh, just to give hope that our Lord and his mercy is still with us. But, the, he, but Jesus also promised the time of the justice. So let us board that ark on the immaculate heart of Mary. Stay close to Jesus and Mary so that when his time of justice does come and all of heaven is let loose as Our Lady described, we'll be safe on that ark. We'll be safe in the heart of Jesus. So, anyway, so, Jesus said, The end of the time of my mercy is approaching. Take advantage of these last thousands that you have left so that you can reconcile with God and we take the path of salvation. All right, again, this is Enoch. I'm reading from Enoch. With my warning and miracle. So he's warning us. This is Our Lady of Las Aletas warning us. Jesus warned us even in the divine mercy to Faustina. The time of my mercy will end and the time of the final stage of my justice and purification will start which is going to end with your deliverance or removal of the kingdom of the evil from the earth. My people, my glorious cross will soon appear in the firmament and it will be visible throughout the earth. All of humanity will be able for seven days with their nights to contemplate the brilliance of my cross, my glorious cross of Golgotha, for as long as my glorious cross lasts in the sky, great celestial manifestations will be seen. Okay, that's interesting. What does that mean? I don't know. Many angels will be roaming around it and the heavens will open to let you see great celestial wonders never before seen by any eye. All those with faith who prostrate and pray to my cross will be healed. Many sick in body and soul will be healed and liberated. There will be a new Pentecost on earth. Now, a new Pentecost, Our Lady in the Mirror Movement of Priests speaks of that extensively. Many will speak new tongues and will receive gifts and charisms from the Holy Spirit. My people will rejoice and will praise the glory of God. There will be many conversions and many souls that were far from the fold will convert and will receive baptism of the Spirit. And she speaks of many souls. Our Lord speaks of many souls who will be converted. And souls being like St. Paul before his conversion, persecuting the church, they will also be converted and be a witness to Christ and his gospel. So our Lord says, Rejoice, people of mine, for it is near. My next coming I will come with all my glory and splendor as supreme king to reign over my faithful flock in the new heavenly Jerusalem. All right, so I'll, end it. I'll stop there with Enoch. It's very hopeful. You can go um, and look up uh, Google Enoch. My glorious cross will soon appear in the firmament. My glorious cross will soon appear in the firmament. May 12, 2019. You can read it for yourselves. Very, very enlightening, very hopeful, very uplifting. So uh, maybe I'll end there with um, a lady of La Salette. Let me end there. So it's 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 kind of crazy what she's saying. These so-called resurrected dead will be nothing but the devil in his form. And what do they do? They're going to de- they're going to deceive many into thinking that they are from Christ. Jesus even warned. Beware of those false Christs who say, Christ, here he is, here he is there. In those days, there'll be many caught in my name. This is what Jesus is talking about. So, I'll end it there, and I want to also leave you with a hopeful message from the Marian Movement of Priests, which I just prayed to Our Lady, and I just opened up at random, and this is what... Um, She says it's very hopeful how she wants to use her movement for all of her priests. She loves her priests, son. She loves them. Whether they're far away or not, whether they're in error or not, she loves them all, wants to save them all. So, San Amarillo, Italy, February 2nd, 1994, the Feast of the Presentation of the Child Jesus, message number 511. It's titled, The Gift of My Trust. She says, Beloved children, let yourselves be carried in my motherly arms into the temple of the Lord. 
to be offered by me to the perfect glory of the most holy trinity. For this I am gathering you from every part of the world. For this I ask you to consecrate yourself to my immaculate heart. I think every chapter she's always asking, consecrate, consecrate, consecrate to her immaculate heart. For this I am leading you each day along the road pointed out by me, and I am forming you for many years now with the gift of my motherly word. In you the Father must be glorified in the perfect fulfillment of his divine will. In you the Son wants to be relived in such a way that you become the instrument of his divine mercy. See? So this is falling right in line with what Enoch is saying. What the divine mercy is saying about his glory of cross, the sign in the sky, and so forth. In you, the Holy Spirit is at work with the force of his love in order to make you capable of transforming hearts and souls. So that really is the mission and, and biggest part of the ministry of priests is to transform hearts and souls and lead them to be transformed into the hearts of Jesus, another Christ. And Our Lady helps, them, helps us in the biggest way. Thus, in these last times, you must become light to whom is, whomever is walking in darkness. Become light to whomever is walking in darkness. Light to whomever is under the yoke of sin. That's what Our Lady talked about, the yoke of sin and death. Love to whomever is consumed by violence and hatred. Comfort to whomever is overwhelmed by suffering and balm upon the wounds of the poor and the sick strength for the weakness of the little and the oppressed. So all of what she's talking about really gets enhanced via, and is a fruit of Marian consecration. All of them beautiful um, uh, virtues, she saw, comfort to those, be, uh, become the balm, uh, give strength to the weak. All of that is really what Our Lady teaches via her consecration. In this way, you are able to communicate to all the gifts of my trust. Be the gift of my trust for the church today, so suffering and divided, crushed and oppressed, a church which is climbing the Calvary of its painful passion. Never as in these times of yours has the church had such need of experiencing all the tenderness and merciful compassion of its heavenly mother. I want to exercise through you my motherly duty toward the church, love the church with the bearing of my immaculate heart, wipe away its sweat, heal its wounds, soothe its pain, share in its suffering, help it to carry its heavy cross toward the Calvary of its immolation. And that's exactly why God in his infinite wisdom gave us Mary from the cross. Jesus gave us Mary as an example we need her just like Jesus needed her to carry our cross. The church is the mystical body of Christ, the bride of Christ. Mary is needed to help the church carry his cross. To wipe away its sweat, heal its wounds, soothe its pain, share in its suffering, help it to carry the heavy cross. So she's asking her priest son so that she could act in them and through them for this great task. Stay close to the Pope and to your bishops with prayer, and with your filial love. Support your brother priests. Above all, run to meet the weakest, the most fragile, those who are yielding under the weight of the great difficulties of these last times. How many priests I know are talking about, I have five, four parishes to take care of. What am I to do? And that's just one example. So they're really carrying a heavy, heavy yoke of four priests. Pray for them. Pray for them and ask Our Lady to assist them. You must be the gentle and merciful hand of your Heavenly Mother who bends over to place balm on the wounds of the sinners, of those who are estranged, of the poor, of those who are marginalized, of the oppressed, and of the abandoned. In this way, you yourselves become the gift of my trust for the Church of these, your times. Be the gift of my trust for all of this poor humanity. Help it to return to God along the road of prayer and penance. That's along the road of prayer and penance. To return to God. This is the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. The pathway of conversion is the only way along which it must journey in order to attain salvation and peace. That's why our Lady of La Salette is coming as a warning. 
But now you are entering into the decisive times, times for which I have been preparing you for many years, how many will be swept away by the terrible hurricane. A, huge, a third of the stars were swept away by the tail of the huge red dragon. Isn't that interesting? How many will be swept away by the terrible hurricane which has already hurled itself upon humanity. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth for the devil and Satan has been cast down. And he is furious. This is the time of the great trial. This is my time. O oh, children consecrated to my immaculate heart, I want to manifest myself by means of you and to give to all the gift of my trust above all when the days of the great desolation and of the general despair will have come. For this reason, I ask you to let yourselves be carried in my motherly arms into the temple of the glory of the Lord in order that you become for all a light of hope by spreading everywhere the gift of my trust in these your final times. Wow. I mean, it's all there. And the message we la read last week was extremely hopeful because Our Lady is saying in that previous message, you'll, you'll hear it in, in the part two of Our Lady of La Salette, that our Blessed Mother is saying that she's using all that the devil is doing, all of his victories, all of his um, deceit, whatever, she's using for the triumph of her Immaculate Heart and also to bring many children back into the refuge of her Immaculate Heart. So it doesn't matter what the devil is doing. What matters is we embrace the merciful love of God and we listen to the Mother of God and her instruction and direction how to, in the, on the way to, to the heart of Jesus. That's what matters. And God will do the rest. So, is there anything you want to add, Robert? I was long-winded there, but I wanted to make sure I got that in. And I'm praying that Our Lady uh, open the hearts and minds of all that has been said and take advantage of, of this great um, the messages that Our Lady is giving. The only, the, only thing, the only thing I'd like to say is in, in the message of La Salette, it explained how Our Lady's holding Jesus' hand and is very heavy. And, and, and right. soon she was going to take it upon herself. When we're consecrated to Our Lady, we love her. And we see through her eyes the situation of her son being brutalized. And as she's gathering us to her heart, we're helping her. We're helping the woman. We're like uh, uh, taking on the, the, the spewing out of that river. And we're loving our lady along, along the way. And Jesus is looking upon us and enabling us to, through his grace, to love his mother. And he is so pleased when we do that. To the degree we do that is to the degree of the souls that could be saved. And it's so important to consecrate to Jesus through Mary and to receive all that grace, all that Holy Mother Church has to offer us, all the traditions yeah. of the church which will, which will heal the church, the seven sorrows and seven joys of St. Joseph, all these beautiful truths to console us through the power of the Holy Spirit, for, through the consoler and the comforter, the Holy Spirit, as we go to our martyrdoms, uh, whether they be, they be white or red. Amen. Thank you, Robert. And uh, I'll lend you end with this last thought St. Maximilian Colby says, Our Lady looks for souls who will consecrate themselves to her immaculate heart so that she can make you into instruments to crush the head of Satan. It's so beautiful. And this is exactly why St. Louis de Montfort and St. Maximilian Colby and all these other great new saints are so on fire in promoting Marian consecration. St. John Paul II told us to it. He'll tell you all about it, too. Just read his writing. And that's it for this week, and I hope you'll join us next time. Uh, also, I'll remind you, uh, take a look at our previous shows. This is part three. We did part one and part two. Take a look at those, and, uh, and I hope uh, you'll be enlightened and enriched in the glory of God, in the, in the, in the, the mercy of God. Until then, until the next time, may God, the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, Bless all of you listening and your families and protect you and keep you and bring you to the heart of Jesus, through the heart of Mary, in union with St. Joseph. Amen. God bless everyone. Amen. May God bless.
Hello, God's beloved. I'm Annabelle Mosley, author, professor of theology, and host of Then Sings My Soul and Destination Sainthood on WCAT Radio. I invite you to listen in and find inspiration along this sacred journey we're traveling together to make our lives a masterpiece and, with God's grace, become saints. Join me, Annabelle Mosley, for Then Sings My Soul and Destination Sainthood on WCAT Radio. God bless you. Remember, you're never alone. God is always with you. Thank you for listening to a production of WCAT Radio. Please join us in our mission of evangelization. And don't forget, love lifts up where knowledge takes flight.